Hey everyone, I'm back with a new video about Older Mods 8 and this time we're talking about gem farming. And actually this is a huge thing because normally gem farming is not possible by general race of mob farms. So you can't use a mob grinder, you can't use modular routers, you can't use whatever kind of way you could think of to like completely passively farm gems. However, I found a way how we can do this at least in an AFK kind of way. And this is what I'm going to show you now. Okay, and this is the setup we're going to work with. I would say pretty small, could be bigger, but it has all what we need. And I will first show you how this whole setup works. So we're going to spawn our mobs. Uh, in my case, it's silverfish. And let's accumulate a couple of them and let's slowly but surely walk over to the magical part to a whole thing. So let's go into this and Yes, you can see it already. Big explosions, big loot. And I can show you actually the um, result of this whole setup. Um, this is the gems I farmed uh, while I was just testing the setup. So this is me just playing around with it, like kind of farming on the side. And you can see on like in real time, more and more gems are getting added to the chest. And yes, now we'll tell you what you have to do to get this. Okay, now I'm going to tell you how you can do this. As you can already see, we need Spectral Bite. This is an enchantment which you can add to your boots. And it has a certain chance to trigger a Spectral Bite, which you know from the Evokers, on the, um, if we get attacked. And you might be questioning, if you didn't see it in the beginning, we're getting actually attacked by a Silverfish down there. And the reason why we are using a Silverfish in this case down there is they have the lowest damage. And they are pretty small, so we can just easily put them in a one block high space. And um, so we get all the time, like half a heart of damage. And with all the other videos I made and showed you already, like you can have a lot of protection or you can also use like regeneration, what I'm currently also using with like the um, environmental controller. Or you can use any other way of like staying alive, really. There's a lot of ways. And even if I take off all the armor um, and just have the boots, I'm I'm getting a bit more not back, but actually it's still the same thing here. So you don't it's actually like a minimum amount of requirement is like really low. And um, so yeah, we're getting attacked, and because of that, the mobs die. And because this kind of damage counts as player damage. So we can just now we could now go AFK and just wait and see what's going to happen. Now I'm going to tell you what you need to do to maximize your loot capacities. So for that, actually, the really cheeky thing about this whole thing is weapons apply their enchantments and their effects to the Spectral Bite and also fawns, actually. That means if a mob gets killed through Spectral Bite and we have the weapon selected in, like, in, in our hand, then we're going to have the loot pinatas, we're going to have looting, we're going to have scavenger. And actually, two other ways to stay alive. Leech also applies. So when you kill a mob, you leech the health, you stay alive, so you can actually also do it with that. And then the capturing is, is more of a side thing, um, because you get the um, the spawn egg. So for instance, if your silverfish dies, you can just use like one of those spawn eggs uh, instead. It's not extremely necessary. There are other ways to get the, the egg. I will get to that later. But it's a nice thing you don't have to worry about. And it's just one more enchantment you can add to the weapon. And because of that, we have those loot explosions. So you can sometimes see like bigger explosions happening. And what happens with that is you can get up to 20 gems at once. So if the loot pinata, um, yes, you can, can, were able to see there for a second. If the loot pinata happens on, um, the, uh, on the gem, like the loot pinata always happens on one random item kind of, um, then you get like, can get like 20, 20 gems in one, in one hit. That's why I have like some of them in like 30 or like high amounts because they like got a loot pinata or this one 55 and like you have so many gems you will never need more than that and yes so that's it about the weapon. Okay and now I'm going to show you what you need to set this whole thing up. One of the most important things is the spawner so we need a spawner which spawns as mobs. In my case, I picked silverfish because they have a um, small amount of health. And again, they are really small. You can easily make like a compact system with it. And because they have the low amount of health, if they take fall damage, it's easier to get them to like half a heart because then they die more easily. 
Um, how you get spawners, there's like two, I think, common ways people do it. So one is Silk Touch. So you can get the typical Silk Touch enchantment. Or you can also use, so we can just go Silk Touch here. Silk Touch enchantment, pretty easy to get. Alternatively, you can use Brass. So if we go to my typical Silent Gear approach, um, you have Brass, which is really easy to create. It's made out of copper and zinc. And then you get Brass Dust, you make an ingot out of it, and you can use that as a pickaxe. And you get the trait Silky, which adds Silk Touch to all Harvest tools. So also a really quick way to get actually Silk Touch. Another way which is also often used is the cardboard box by mechanism. So you can use this. Let me quickly switch to um, survival mode. You can use it actually on everything, like not just spawners. You can right click on like one of the, for instance, let's put it on the chest right now. And if we break it, we have now the chest. If we place it down and then sh uh, shift right click, we move the chest without, without anything happening to the loot inside of it. Mm -hmm. So this is really helpful, not just for, for spawners, but also for um, like such situations where you want to move a full chest, for instance. And you can use that, collect a spawner, and then place it wherever you want it to be. Next part is about the how can we turn it into, well, a server fish spawner, right? Because server fish spawners, at least from what I know, are not available anywhere, right? So we need to change the spawner type. You can do that with a egg. So um, you can use spawn eggs to change the type of a spawner. If you right click with the silverfish egg, it's going to change. So I can do this quickly with a skeleton. And on the top left, you can see now it says mob skeleton. We're switching back to the silverfish. And um, how do you get the silver, uh, silverfish spawn egg? There are a couple of ways. Um, two main ones. You have the recipe with the charms. So you can just kill mobs and they drop the charm fragments. And in this case, you need to kill silverfish charms and then you combine it with an egg. The other option is with mob swaps. Um, they are here. Oh. What you have to do with this is right click on a... Yes, right click on a silverfish and now we have the DNA of the silverfish. And if we combine this with seeds and a XP bucket, then we can use that to um, create a spawn egg. So um, actually, oh, to, 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 you have then to feed this chicken feed to a chicken, and then you get a spawn egg. I'm not, I'm not going to show it this time. Um, I think there's some videos about like the mob swap or mob grinding utensils out there. Just check that. But those are the options you have to get to this. Um, I think this one is actually the easiest to just kill a couple of silverfish in the... Um, in the stronghold and then get the charms especially if you have a looting weapon you shouldn't have an issue with that and then just um, craft one spawning egg and as i said with capturing later on you can just um, get the spawn eggs also you can use capturing from the get-go actually i'm completely forgot about it you can just use capturing uh if you have capturing kill a couple of silverfish in the in the stronghold you can also get the spawn eggs so a lot of ways to change your um change your spawner to a silverfish spawner. And the last thing uh, about the spawner is how we can optimize it. So normally we need to add a couple of things to make it work at all. So for instance, one thing is a dragon egg to ignore all um, conditions. So actually I don't have the proper one. I'm not, I'm not sure why, but in the newest version you can't cheat a dragon egg. So I will show, use this one as the replacement right now this one adds the ignore all collisions so you can see that in the spawner if you uh, click on the spawner and then press recipes you can find all these spawner modifications from apotheosis here and you can just click through for instance you have ignore player uh, ignore players which we don't really need since we we are close by but you can add another star ignore slide is also um in the dragon egg so if you do the dragon egg you don't need it at all uh fermented spider eye Definitely good, increases the spawn count. Um, Ghast here is good, max entities. Wool, definitely recommendable because we're spawning so many mobs and they're they are loud, so just go with silent. Um, the chorus fruit, you can also add that one. And then we have the actually more important one. So those are sugar and the clock because those two are, uh, are going to change the um, spawn delay up here. 
So th this one, like if you have, for instance, a zombie spawn, I think they are like at 400. That means, um, I think it's ticks, not not seconds, but uh, ticks. Um, how many, um, like after how many ticks, we have a new spawn um, happening. And as we were able to see, we had like quite a lot um, when um, with those upgrades. So yeah, add sugar, add the clocks. And then the last thing you should add is the redstone comparative, at least if you want to stop it, right? Like, and then you can like use this kind of setup with a um, repeater and some kind of redstone um, transmitter. So I'm using the um, RF tools utility receiver and the transmitter. So when I like I switch the lever here, it's going to send up the signal up here and then it transfers it over. The reason why I have the repeater in between uh, mobs can't spawn on repeaters, mobs can spawn on the receiver. So if I would put the receiver here, actually it could happen that some of the um, silverfish will, uh, will spawn on top of the receiver, which we don't want. So yeah, that's the reason why we have um, the setup with the repeater. Also important, actually, uh, I missed that, the spawn range. Um, you can in increase and decrease the spawn range with a blaze rod. So this one would increase if you just do it with right click and a place where it's increasing the spawn range, but we want to decrease it. And how can you decrease or remove a modification? That's with quartz. That means you have to put quartz in your offhand. Let me quickly showcase, like just put, get some quartz, put it in your offhand, and then you would have blaze rod in your normal hand. So it should look like this. And then I can quickly show you right now on the top left, you can see I'm increasing the spawn range to whatever. So now, in a 15 block radius, silverfish would spawn, which we definitely don't want. And uh, if you want to turn it around, we have to put this one in our offhand. And now you can see it's going to decrease again. And that's all about the um, spawner preparation. Um, you can also see um, the uh, like setup below it is we have like vector plates. They're really easy to create. Um, you can just um, check the recipe. It's just, I think, it's basic stone, some sugar, and then some kind of slime. You can see like the different options you have. And the green ones are totally enough. So you don't need to upgrade them. You can make them really, really fast. But like the green ones are totally fine because they only have to move one block. And then all of them are getting pushed inside of our well, funnel down there. Also, the, the blocks are completely unimportant, really. Uh, well, at least unless you use stone, please don't use stone because we are going uh, like at least I'm using silverfish. And we don't want uh, silverfish inside of our area. I'm using glass because it's easier for you to see what's going on inside of the um, system. Okay, and that's all about the spawners up there. I will quickly also show you what I have down here. So as I mentioned, the redstone transmits the signal up there. Then I have a environmental controller. This is kind of just to be more comfortable. Like you don't have to worry about your health. You don't have to worry about your um, food because when you get hit your food goes down so you could be starving after some point with those two things added inside you can completely ignore it and you don't even need like a big radius for this so you can just use like the heights like barely around this and then the radius actually this can be lower this can be five not 57 and now you're getting the regen re regeneration and the saturation in this radius so that's pretty uh, convenient um, yeah, if you want to build it, uh, maybe just check the uh, recipe. I think it's not too... Uh, it's a bit more expensive with the diamonds, but I think it's nothing too outstanding. And then you can just look for the uh, modules. And then you have like here the saturation module and the regeneration. And um, yeah, that's it about the environmental controller. You also have... Oh, wait, uh, I forgot something. We have the lock module. This one can be, you can also use something else, like this is going uh, gives you the luck potion effect. So you can either use a luck potion, a luck charm, or the luck module in the environmental controller. And then the last part about this whole setup um, in front here is the item collection. So you can, like, you can kind of use whatever you want. You can even like put a hopper down there, uh, which moves the items. Um, I just like the advanced item collector reason for that. It's instant, so it doesn't have storage. As you can see here, there's another one. I think it's called the absorption hopper. It has storage, which means it's storing the items and then you have like it's moving the items every tick. This one is instant, so it just teleports everything from there into the chest. So it's kind of the 
the quickest way, at least from what I know. Only thing we're missing the experience points. So if you want to collect the experience points, you should put up like a absorption hopper and uh, can't find it here. Hopper, absorption hopper. Um, this one can also collect experience fluid, which you can then, for instance, put into a crystal. I think they're called experience crystals. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you could then do this. You put it to fluid. Oh, that's the wrong direction. Uh, fluid and then like right now if something would die the experience would get um, collected here and then moved into our experience crystal where you can just store or collect um, your levels. One thing to add about the collection system here is to have a like some kind of filter at least if you don't want uh, any of the other items because as you can see here I have a couple of items here which I don't want in this chest. So for instance the elemental craft shards I think this like if you have a mob farm normally at least I don't want them. The essence, you can keep them if you want, but they are going to bloat your chest quite quickly. Um, you have the bigger earth shards, and then we, <laughs> I have some items for mobs which attacked me while I was building this. So we have Phantom Membrane and um, the Wanderer. So yes, those are the items I'm destroying in this case. So we're losing the, uh, like we're losing those items in that sense. You can leave them in if you want, but for me, gems were the main reason. And for that, you need a sophisticated chest for my setup and then adding the advanced void upgrade. There are also other upgrades. You can do the, um, the stack one. So actually, you could like, if you go full AFK and you add the here stack upgrade tier four and you would add two of those, you can have like, I think thousands, like thousands of gems. Like you could go like AFK for a full week and then come back and it will be so full. You can never have to collect any other gems in the game again. And that's it about the storage. So now we spawn the mobs, they fall down. We survive with the regeneration. We collect the items. And to quickly showcase the setup about the um, silverfish down here, so for this one, as I said, uh, you need a, a spawn egg to spawn it down there, or at least that's the most convenient way, in my opinion. And um, how I put it up is to have a vector plate to push the silverfish into this direction, because the silverfish needs to be in this egg, uh, corner so that we have the perfect position for the spectral bite. Because as you can see, it's not really controlled. Like it's not controlled by anywhere we are looking or something. It's just um, based on where we get hit like from where we get hit and from which position. So the um, silverfish has to be specifically at this spot. Sometimes if you spawn it, it can happen that it's like not perfectly in the corner. Then I would just advise you to come to this side and just punch it once. And then it's going to be like normally pushed here and then you push it there and then it's stuck there and can't get outside of it. And then you just come in and then it's, uh, and then it's working. Next up, I'm going to talk about the gems specifically, because as you can see, we don't have all the gems from the mod pack in our chest. Reason for that is the gems are dependent on the dimension where the mob is killed. Meaning we are right now in the overworld means we can only get gems which are either core. Those are gems which spawn in all the dimensions and which are at the same time um, overworld right so uh, i prepared this chest to kind of showcase this we have the core gems up here so we have the brawler breach combatant ballast guardian lightning samurai lunar solar tyrannical splendor warlord and the slipstream gem so those are the core gems you can find them everywhere so wherever you build this you're going to get this and then I kind of try to showcase here in the overworld, you're getting the Earth Gem and the Royal Family Gem. In the end, you can get the Ender Search Gem and the Mage Slayer Gem. In the end, uh, end Nether, you get the uh, Ravenous Blood Lord Gem and the Incandescent Inferno Gem. And in the Twilight um, Dimension, you get the Twilight Forest Gem and the Frozen Queen Gem. And that's all the gems, um, all where you can find them. As I said, just to emphasize this again, you can build one to one the same set in all of them. You don't need to kill like um, Enderman, for instance, to get the Ender Search gem. You can kill zombies. You can kill silverfish. The dimension is the only um, impactful point about which, ge uh, which gem is going to drop. One thing I would actually advise you to um, do your first 
gem farm in the end because the ender search gem is one of the best ones like as you saw in my previous videos we use the ender search gem almost for all setups because the um, additional levels to the enchantments are just too great to um, skip over after that i would go um, overworld actually yeah then we have either the nether version if you want to have the berserker fury setup or here the one i think is interesting is the uh, twilight frost gem because it's going to give you the treasure um, treasure goblin if you attack a entity and they I, i've seen in like a post on reddit where somebody killed like one treasure goblin with the loot pinata and they got like a hundred gems or something like uh, like completely broken actually <laughs> um so if you want to combine it it works sadly it doesn't work in our setup because uh, we are not attacking with the dagger so it doesn't count as attacking an uh, entity i tried it as you can see i tried to put an enchantment on it it's not working um sadly in this case okay now i'm going to tell you how you can optimize this whole setup even further so if you want to increase your overall gem production what are the steps or what should be the um points you should look out for so first thing is looting so we want as much as possible looting so put looting on your weapon and put scavenger on your weapon and um add the ender search gem as you can see actually which i think is a great update i think it's either by silent or apotheosis we now can see the proper enchantment after the ender search enchantment so on the right side you can see actually it's scavenger three and looting nine but with the ender search gem we get two additional levels which is really great so this is our way of doing the looting another way is to get the superstitious hat which applies an extra level of looting to all killed entities the artifacts you can see here um, you can get them from mimics so if you kill a mimic and get the um, prediction that's one way you can find the mimics inside of like generated um, areas i think mostly underground like if you go mining and sometimes you see like this kind of campsite inside of them like a, a a cave for instance those can have mimics and if you kill them there's a certain chance to get this hat there are also other ones uh, i think they're actually really nice um so like for instance getting the um loot fabricator and then the hostile neural network with the mimic is a really great way to get all of those because there are some really nice ones for instance attack speed or night vision which uh, like if you get it it's really good and the second thing is luck um, as you can see on the tip of my weapon i used already lapis lazuli so we have luck to through the lapis but also through the reforging and um, i also added luck to all my armor or at least i tried to at the same time i added um, splendor gems you can add to your main chest plate and your legs the splendor gem which is one of the core gems so you can get them everywhere and it's going to add six additional luck per gem so right now i am at 57.5 luck as you can see most of it is through the armor itself and we have two luck through the weapon and then one luck through the potion effect and the last thing i can think of to potentially increase the gem production is by putting more spawners and putting more um, mobs so as you saw originally, um, we have the spectral bite in a full 30, 360 radius. If you do it well, you can actually put um, like multiple spawners and like distribute all the mobs in this area and like put tons of spawners, increase the amount, kill way more mobs than I was uh, I was killing in this video. So you can like really optimize it. And it's already time to wrap up this video. So I really hope you liked it and it's helpful for you and all of your gem needs. And if you have too many gems, turn it into gem dust. You need those too. So um, yeah, if you liked the video, please leave a like. It really helps the channel. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, if something was unclear and you have, or you have any other requests for the future, put it in the comments and I will answer to that. And if you don't want to miss any other future videos, I'm going to produce Please subscribe to the channel and I wish everyone an amazing day.